Hey everybody, welcome back to another hidden feature video. Today we are going to focus on features that you may not know on One UI 6. Also, some of the features might be available on One UI 5.1, but mainly we are going to focus on One UI 6. So keep that in mind. Alright, so let's begin. Okay, so on One UI 6, if you've got a photo of a document in the gallery, you've now got the option to scan the document right here. So open the photo and tap on the T button and you'll see an option to scan the document right here, which you can tap and well scan the document. On One UI 5, you can scan a document only while taking a picture of it. So this is a really nice addition. Now, if you tap on the T button on a photo which has a QR code, now you've got the option to read the QR code. So you can open the link that's in the QR code or copy whatever information it carries. Nice. Also, whenever you edit or make changes to a photo like tweak its brightness or apply a filter, now you've got the option of copying all of the changes that you make over to a new photo. So once you are done making changes, tap on these three dots and then select copy edits. Now open a photo in which you want to paste the changes that you have made to the previous photo. So let's open this in the image editor. Then tap on these three dots and select paste edits. So this is going to apply all of the changes that you had made to the previous photo onto this one. You can also paste the effect that you've copied onto multiple photos. All you gotta do is select the photos in which you want to paste the effects in. Then tap on these three dots and then paste edits. And there you go. So this feature is going to be very useful if you want to reuse the changes that you have made to a previous photo. Now if you don't like it, the changes can be reverted very easily. So open the photo, head on into the image editor and then revert the changes that you've made. And this will bring the photo back to its original form. So when you've got apps open in the pop-up view, what you can do is grab them by the handle and move them to the top or the bottom of the screen to activate the split view mode. So just like that. And from here, select the second app that you want to run in the split view. And there you go. Now, if you want to switch back to the pop-up view, tap on the handle and then select this button and the app will go back to the pop-up view. Oh, and another thing that's new is now you can snap the pop-up view to the edge of the screen just like this. Did you catch that? Let me show you that again. Alright, so when you've got an app open in the pop-up view, grab it by the handle and bring it to the edge of the screen to snap it to the edge. And there you go. Now the app is still running, it's just minimized. And as you can see, you can have multiple apps snapped to the edge of the screen. And tapping on them will bring them back up. So this feature is awesome. I absolutely love it. On One UI 6, whenever you make or receive a phone call, you've now got the option to switch over to Bixby Text Call by tapping on this button. Hey, how are you? So now you can type and Bixby will talk to the other person. And it's gonna transcribe whatever the other person says. I'm good. What about you? I absolutely love Bixby Text Call. Also, keep in mind that you will have to go into the phone's dialer and then settings, then enable Bixby text call if you actually want to see the button that lets you switch over to Bixby text call. Oh, and one more thing that's new is they've added an option to take notes right here from the calling screen. So there you go. That's going to make jotting down points a lot easier. And by the way, these notes are going to be saved in the Samsung Notes app. Now coming back to the photo editor, the thing is, whenever you edit photos, you kinda make multiple changes, like tweaking the photo's brightness, changing the contrast, etc, etc. What's new in One UI 6 is that now you've got the option to undo and redo individual changes in case you make a mistake. So this is nice. Meanwhile, on the previous version, if you end up making a mistake, you've only got the option to revert all of the changes that you've made. And that's gonna revert all of the edits that you've made to a photo, which can be quite frustrating. So this undo and redo thing is a nice addition. Now in the calendar, whenever you set up an event for a yearly event, like for example a birthday, the calendar is automatically gonna suggest you to have this set up as a yearly reminder. 
and if you do this the phone is going to remind you every year of the birthday which is going to be very useful if you are bad at remembering birthdays so you might have noticed that in the notification panel your recent notifications are not on the top of the screen you can actually see that the notification from whatsapp is at the top but if you look at the time it is not the most recent notification snapchat has the most recent notification because it was received at 11 5 pm and a message on whatsapp came in at 11 3. this is because by default the phone sorts notifications by priority and this can be a problem because because sometimes you might miss out on the most recent notification. However, the good news is that now we can change this by going into the settings, then notifications, and here you can tap on sort notifications and change this to by time. So now you'll see that your most recent notification is at the top, which I think is how it really should be. So you already might know that if you long press on a particular item in an image, you get the option to extract that object. So you get three options on One UI 5. But on One UI 6, they've added a fourth option which lets you save the extracted item as a sticker. So there you go. I think this is awesome because you can use the sticker in your chats like this. While gaming, you might have noticed that the phone gets excessively hot. This usually happens when you are charging and playing a video game simultaneously. Well, if you feel like the phone is overheating, what you want to do is drop down the notification panel while you are playing the game and tap to open game booster. Then tap on the gear icon of the game booster to go into the settings. Now here you want to enable pause USB PD charging when gaming. Once you enable this, the battery charging will be bypassed and the phone will be powered directly off the USB power supply. And you can see it in action here, the power consumption has dropped from 20 watts down to just 4 watts and that's the power we are using to keep the phone running. So pausing the charging while gaming will extend the life of the battery and prevent the phone from overheating. Now keep in mind that this only works with USB power delivery chargers like this one. Remember juice jacking? Well, here's the thing. If you are worried about your phone getting hacked or hijacked through USB or getting infected by malware, then you must enable the auto blocker. It's inside the settings under security and privacy. So here it is. So when enabled, this feature is going to keep your phone safe by number one, blocking apps from unauthorized sources. So I think it disables side loading. Number two, it checks apps for malicious activity. And number three, it blocks command via USB, which I think is super useful. And moreover, it also seems to have some sort of malware protection for messages and the ability to block software updates via USB. So this is a really nice security feature and I would suggest keeping it on for added protection. Want to check the password of the wireless network that you're connected to? Well, go into the settings, connections, then Wi-Fi, then tap on the gear icon of the network that you're connected to and finally tap on the I button. Enter your pin and now you'll see the password of the wireless network that you're connected to. And you can also do the same with the passwords of the networks that you've saved on your phone. Very convenient. Alright, so traditionally, whenever you want to move a widget or an icon, you would first long press it and then drag it to whichever home screen you want to put it on. And sometimes this method can be tedious and frustrating. So don't do this. Instead, long press on the widget or the app icon and use your thumb to navigate to the home screen you want to drop this on. And there you go. So this is much easier than dragging and dropping the widgets and the icons. The two finger drag and drop method also works with photos, videos and text. Let me demonstrate. So if you want to send some photos over WhatsApp, what you can do is head on into the gallery and start by selecting the photos that you want to share. Then keep your finger on the photos until they separate out like this. Now you can use your thumb to launch the app that you want to drop the photos in. Like we can send these over through WhatsApp just like this. Awesome, right? And the same method also works for text. And I think this method is much easier and faster than manually copying and pasting text. And there you go. 
So let's keep it nice and short this week. And yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. If you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and do check out my other videos because I've got tons of tutorials on Samsung devices. And I'll see you guys next week. And this is Tech Guy Charlie signing off.